Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome, Chargers. We're glad to have you back again this week for another great podcast. Can you believe it? It's December 2022. I told you this week, our goal is to find guests this quarter that will make a difference for you in 2023. And I think we've done it again. But remember, I made a big announcement last week. And I want to remind you, we are in the process of changing the name of the podcast. Now, if you're a subscriber, you don't have to do a thing. It's going to automatically transfer, but you're going to see a new logo design. You're going to see a new name. And that name is Small Business Answer Man. So we are excited about that change of the podcast and we appreciate you um, coming. That happened January 1st. So once the first episode comes out in January, you'll notice that change. But why am I doing this? I'm doing this because, you know, most entrepreneurs struggle with overwhelm and chaos. No business owner can master all the key components of running a successful business on their own. The Small Business Answer Man podcast provides you with solutions. When you find solutions, your business grows and you gain freedom of time. And that's what we've tried to do the last four years with Charge. But we're kind of focusing it in on those small business and entrepreneur problems. And today we've got one of those guests that's going to give us that also. So I'm excited to share with you, Ian. But Ian's going to share with you before I give you all the details about him. What problem, Ian, will you share with our listeners today? I think the biggest one I see a lot of folks struggling with is defining reality, being open to paying attention to what's happening around you and uh, minimizing the risk of being in denial. Well, this is going to be a great conversation because we were just talking about how we have a hard time being, dis- we get easily distracted. So we're going to have a great time discussing this. So today I've got Ian Ziskin. He's president of Exec Excel Group and has 40 years of experience as a business leader, board advisor, and a member, coach, consultant, entrepreneur, teacher, speaker, and an author. He is the co-founder and partner in business Insight Group, co-founder of the Consortium for Change, and a co-founder of the Create Project. His global leadership experience includes chief human resource officer and other senior leadership roles with three Fortune 100 companies, Northrop Grumman, Quest Communications, and TRW. Ian has written dozens of articles, blogs, and book chapters on the future of work, HR, leadership coaching, and HR's role with the board of directors. Ian, it is great to have you on the Charge Podcast. Welcome. Uh, Great to be here, Gary. Thanks for having me. Well, I thought maybe the best way to start, because leaders are struggling in this way, in this area, I think, quite a bit. What do leaders who drive and sustain successful transformation change actually do? Because I know my small business owners, they're looking for those employees that can make change happen because they don't have thousands of employees. Sometimes they have five or 10 or 15. So how can they help that transformational change actually happen? Yeah, that's exactly right. I agree with you 100% the way you uh outline the problem. You don't have unlimited resources, especially if you're an entrepreneur. So I'll go back to the the problem statement that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of our conversation, Uh, but let's just a little bit of context. So um, learn some lessons over the course of this last year, writing a book called uh, The Secret Sauce for Leading Transformational Change. And a lot of uh, the lessons learned from this experience come from, you know, big complex companies dealing with big complex problems, but also Uh, Equally so from smaller, much more entrepreneurial organizations that don't have the resources or the bureaucracy. And one of the things that really jumped out at me repeatedly in putting this book together was this point I mentioned a couple of minutes ago about uh, the importance of defining reality. Uh, It seems like human beings have this uh, almost limitless capacity to deny, deflect, explain away facts or data 
that do not reinforce their preferred view of the internal or external environment. And I think people who are particularly vulnerable to this problem are entrepreneurs who are so down and in focused on the mission of their organization and trying to build it, figure out how to grow and do all of that with uh, very limited resources and time because they don't have thousands of people surrounding them. It might be just them or it might be a few people, a handful who are helping them try to build the business. And there's this just enormous risk, enormous risk of being um, out of touch with reality. And so uh, to your question, uh, some of the most successful leaders I've seen deal with uh, leading transformational change at whatever scale, you know, whether your business is small, medium sized or huge, is this ability to uh, allow reality to seep in. You know, the situation is what it is. We are where we are understand the facts, understand what we're dealing with, uh, and then put together a game plan for doing something to uh, address it. And maybe one of the best examples, it's so simple, we've all been through it, I'll just uh, share here, uh, is the example of uh, you get on a scale, you're looking down at the data, the scale is telling you uh, it's time to lose some weight. Uh, and most of us are smart enough to know that uh, usually it's some combination of diet and exercise uh, that will yield the result of losing some weight. But if you just keep staring at the scale, uh, the data are irrefutable, but nothing will happen. Uh, there's also this element of uh, allowing feelings to come in. But what I mean by that is, you know, what's in your head, what's in your heart, and how motivated are you to actually take action? And uh, I think that same principle applies to making tough decisions as an entrepreneur and running your business. You know, the, the data is there. Uh, if you're open to it and you pay attention to it, it'll kind of tell you what you need to do. The question is, do you have the, uh, the stick-to-itiveness and willingness to actually take action and address it? That is so true, and I appreciate you sharing that. And one of example, I love your example of scale. If you don't mind, I'm going to kind of question you or talk about an example that I think is happening. And I'm sure you're seeing, I know you've seen it in large organizations with what you've seen happen over the last couple of years. Um, because of the pandemic, the workforce is changing. And I'm not saying it didn't change before, so don't get me there. But what I'm saying, it's changing now. We are very comfortable with remote work. And large organizations, I was just at a conference and, you know, it's pretty commonplace. There was people at this conference that they're working remotely and have that capability. And for small businesses and entrepreneurs, that's a lot more challenging because, you know, they may want it, but it's harder to bring in place. So when you're talking about transformational change, it's been a transformational change in the business world. I've had two clients that recently lost employees because they could go remote. And, you know, don't have to be in the place. And probably the biggest challenge with it is they're getting paid at the level of that marketplace. And we're in a smaller marketplace in Jefferson City, Missouri, so they can't keep up with those wages there. So I guess not so much about the wages, that part of it, but for a leader, if they're trying to think about transformational change in their business, and you've done some HR side of it, how do we have to try to think about it differently to be able to bring that transformational change because what they're saying, well, if I do that, then all the other employees are going to want it. And how can you incorporate that transformational change within your business as you see the models changing? And it's not just in that, and we don't have to use just that model, but it's also happening in the business world because today we can go online and we can buy any product or service we want. It doesn't have to be in the local marketplace like we did before. I mean, you think about it, we can buy a house online and never go to and go do a walkthrough through that house. So I guess just as transform for leaders to think about it, what I'm trying to really get at is the leader side of it. You know, I understand the reality that hits, but as you talked about in your book and your research, was there anything that you can share there to get leaders to think? Because what I want them to think in 2023, I want them thinking differently. We've got to get out of this old reality of business is not going to be the same. It's never going to be the same. And it's not just because of the pandemic. We have more technology than we've ever had. Well, uh, you know, you raised so many really good, important points that are all connected to each other. Uh, let's try to divide them into a couple of 
chunks because I think they're all relevant. First of all, one of the things that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, I think, illustrated to everybody is that uh, there are a lot of things that happened to us that we're not in control of. We didn't necessarily see it coming. There, there is right. this misconception, I think, with, with leading change uh, that a lot of people fall into this trap, that somehow or another, uh, it's it should be anticipated. We should be prepared for it. Uh, we want to connect the dots between seemingly unconnected things and see around corners. And if we do all that stuff really well, uh, somehow we're quote unquote more strategic, you know, or better leaders because we saw it coming. Well, there's plenty of examples, not only in uh, my book, but just in life in general, of those kind of anticipated changes and people being prepared for them. But there are actually a lot more, you know, many more examples of we weren't prepared, we didn't see it coming, we had no idea. Uh, and basically, we had to have the uh, flexibility and the agility and the resilience to deal with it in the moment. Probably no better example than the one you raised, which is, you know, two and a half years of COVID that most people didn't see coming and businesses and people's lives transformed overnight. That's actually one of the, the main reasons I decided to write the book in the first place, because, you know, we were all sitting there in the middle of COVID watching all this happen. So I think there's a couple of lessons that right away come out of all that, uh, particularly valuable for uh, entrepreneurs. One being that um, much of what we do in life and business uh, is affected by and controlled by things that we don't control. Mm. And, and we can have a lot of preferences for how we want to run our lives or run our businesses that for the last you know, 40, 50 years, maybe they worked. And just because they worked for the last 40 or 50 years means absolutely nothing about what's going to work in the next five or 10 or 15 or 20 years. So back to my point about deal with reality, I'm going to keep coming back to that over and over again. You know, don't deny reality. The reality of the situation that we're in today, whether you like it or not, is the workforce has a lot more power and discretion than employers do about what they want to do, where they want to do it, how they want to deliver the work, who they want to work with and for. And the quicker that you know, we as employers, whether you be a head of a small business or a Fortune 100 company, the problem is the same, which is I can declare that the way I run my business, I want it to run in a certain way. I don't want people to work remotely. I want everybody, quote unquote, in the office or, or, you know, on the manufacturing floor. That doesn't mean that the people who are doing the work share your view uh, of how they prefer to do the work. Now, I totally recognize, as I'm sure all of your listeners do, that there are certain types of work that just don't lend themselves to remote or hybrid work. I totally get it. And I think you need to be very clear uh, as an employer about what kinds of roles can be flexible and what kinds of roles cannot be flexible uh, in terms of work location. However, there are many jobs, many jobs, where historically the leader would say, I need you here with me. And by the way, the reasons quite often are only because I don't trust you, right? I won't say that out loud, but basically what I'm thinking is, how do I know you're working if I can't see you? Uh, if that's your mentality as a business owner and leader, you're half dead before you even know it. Because mm -hmm. what the workforce is really expecting from us these days is trust, flexibility, transparency, uh, the ability to have options and choices. And that might translate into remote work, but it also might translate into a more flexible work schedule, or it might translate into more variety or different types of work to make it interesting. All of these changes are taking place in work, the workforce and the workplace, you know, almost overnight. And I think a lot of leaders are frustrated, maybe even a little bit uh, scared because they feel like they're losing control. And again, I'll say to your listeners, if you feel like you're losing control, you're not crazy because you are. Uh, yeah. The power is shifting to the workforce because people have not only have more choices, but they're willing to exercise those choices. Uh, people are willing to quit their jobs and go somewhere else at a pace that I don't think anybody has ever seen before. And there are a lot of reasons for that, but it is happening. It's not uh, 
it's not fake uh, and it's not a trend that's going to shift or change or go away overnight. Well, I think I appreciate you sharing that. And I know I threw a lot in there when I was talking about it, but I think you really hit it because as leaders, we have to understand as business owners, entrepreneurs, it's changing. And one of the things that I'm kind of curious about and may kind of really lead into this is, you know, one of the things we've got to realize as leaders, we've got to start having a transformation change. You know, we've got to start changing. You've talked about reality in some other areas. So kind of, I saw you got excited about that because of course you all are listening to this, but Ian and I are on Zoom so we can see each other. So I'll let you just take that where, whatever you want. But that is one of the things that I see. And maybe in your book, you bring that is we've got to change and become more transformational leaders. Yeah, it, it comes out in so many different ways. I mean, I mean, first of all, one of my uh, favorite quotes that uh, one of the people we surveyed shared with us, which really resonated with me, was uh, transform yourself before trying to change others, right? So mm. if you think if you think about yourself as a leader, uh, out of um, out of all of this input that we received from people and putting the book together, you know, there are a number of different elements, as you can imagine, uh, that we call the the secret sauce. You know, there's you know ten of them that we talk about in the book. Obviously, we don't have time to go through all of them uh, here and now, but one of them that really speaks to what you just raised, Gary, is this whole idea of go first, but not alone. Uh, and here's what here's what I mean by that. You know, if you're a leader of your business, again, doesn't matter size, whether you have you know three people working for you or you know thirty thousand people working for you, this uh, applies. Uh, what are you going to do to set the tone, to create the vision, establish a sense of purpose for the business? You know, make sure people are understanding what needs to be done and what's the direction that we're heading. Be a good role model, right? I mean, those are all things that good leaders do particularly well. Don't expect people to do things that you wouldn't be willing to do yourself, in other words, right? Uh, but at the same time, I couldn't find any examples of large scale, successful, transformational change of any business small, medium, or large, where the leader did it by themselves. You know, in, in every case, the story basically was in one way or another, uh, successful leaders of transformational change travel in packs. They surround themselves with other people who are really good at what they do and who are going to contribute actively to uh, change and improvement in the business. And that principle applies whether you have three people working with you uh, in your in your company or 300 or 3,000 or 30,000 surrounding yourself with the best people you can find, including people who are better than you uh, at certain things that you know you're not as good at. Uh, that's, a, that's a big, important step toward uh, transformation. Uh, the other one that uh, I think gets talked about a lot, but tends to get underplayed is uh, we always talk about, you know, the importance of communication, you know, when you're trying to change and improve the business and run it. But usually that discussion of communication tends to get translated as talk, 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 tell, tell, tell. You know, my mm -hmm. job as the boss is to tell everybody else, you know, what we're trying to accomplish and what their role is in accomplishing it and what I need from them and goals and priorities and all of that, which by the way is extremely important. So I'm not diminishing the value of that, but it usually gets overplayed compared to something else, which is equally, if not more important, which is listen, 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 because whether you have three employees or 300 or 3000 or 30,000, generally those people are closer to the customer. They're closer to what's going on in the marketplace. They have a much better sense of what the obstacles and issues are that are taking place in the organization that are diminishing your chance of uh, success and good performance. And if you're not spending time with them listening to what's working well and what's broken, uh, you're basically operating in the dark or, you know, with one hand tied behind your back. So listen, 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 uh, turns out to be very basic, but a extraordinarily important principle for doing this well. Yeah. What? Oh man, there's so many things there. I'm going to, that communication and you just, I think that really becomes one of the cornerstones along with the reality is, you know, 
are you listening to what your people want? And then, you know, are you willing to make that change? That quote just really resonates with me. And so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, before we move on to the recharge round, I want to ask you one more question. And we may have covered it some, but I don't, I kind of want to kind of get specific to it and stuff. Um, I think in your book, you talk about this some um, is all transformation has changed, but is all change transformational? Tell yes, me, what that, did you mean by that? that that's I think one of the we've high, talked around that, but I yeah, want to get direct to that. I appreciate you, you you asking about that because it was this kind of hypothesis, if you will. You know, we were testing for in putting the book together. And, and here's kind of what we, we discovered. There's a lot of things that people talk about as change, which are important and needed, but they're tweaks. They're relatively minor. They're relatively short term. They're not sustained. They're very narrowly um, defined. And again, not to diminish the importance of all of those changes, but that's really not the same as uh, transformation. And so when you think about transformational change, you, the way I kind of tend to look at it is you're completely rethinking and repositioning mm. basically everything, you know, so the the what, the why, the how, the when, the where, the who, you know, associated with uh, what you're trying to change, which generally needs to lead to some type of dramatic improvement. And so that implies being able to measure in some way, you know, whether things got better or not. Uh, and then the final point is, you know, dramatic improvement of what? And at least, you know, for our purposes in putting the book together, uh, it's dramatic improvement of the effectiveness, the happiness, the health, and or the survival of someone or something. So when you think about that type of definition, there's a certain comprehensiveness to it. Uh, you know, a lot of different systems connect together. There's a, certainly a perspective of you know long-term sustainable change, and there's really important distinction, which is there's a big difference between doing things differently and improving them. And one of the mistakes I think a lot of leaders make, particularly a new leader that comes into a, an organization, maybe inherits you know some stuff uh, that's working and that's not working, is uh, you know, I'm going to change everything at once because I'm going to show that there's a new sheriff in town, Yeah, which turns out to be a, kind of a bad, ineffective strategy, not only because people can't really change a hundred things simultaneously and do it effectively, but also because you have no idea which of the things that you changed actually drove improvement and which ones were just a complete, you know, waste of time, a lot of hand, hand waving and motion, but really made no difference one way or the other. So I would simply say uh, to, to wrap up the thought on this is, you know, even though transformational change is more comprehensive, uh, do it in smaller bite-sized digestible chunks where you think about what's the priority of first few things we need to do, get a handle on those, get some traction, and then move on to other things rather than I believe there's a hundred things that need to be fixed. They may actually all need to be fixed, but you can't fix them all at one time. And especially if you're an entrepreneur running a relatively small business, you don't have the time or resources to fix a hundred things at once. Man, Ian, I could talk to you, I think, for hours because um, I just love this topic. And I think it's one that trying to get business owners to understand it, you know, that it's one of the critical components as we move through really this decade, you know, and we're going through it quicker and all the time as we age, you know, I always say it goes faster and it seems like it is for me. We're going in 2023 and we are going to have to transform our leadership style in business. And instead of saying, well, this is the way I've always done it. And so I really appreciate your time and sharing with my audience and stuff. Please share with them one more time and we'll have it in show notes to the name of your book. I'm sure it's on the different ways they can get it. If you have a site that you want them to go to, tell them that and share them that information because it sounds like your book is a wonderful read. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate you asking. Uh, the name of the book, again, is The Secret Sauce for Leading Transformational Change. And uh, the one-stop shop that people can use to go learn more about it or, or even order it if they're interested uh, is a book site, book website that we have set up. It's www.transformationalchangebook.com. 
com. Okay, super. So please check that out. If you're one of these leaders here and you're saying, how do I do it? Like he said, he's got 10 different strategies that he's put in the book. And the thing I always tell people is a leader is a reader. A reader is a leader. So you've got to read. And I, yeah, is it available via Audible, Ian? Actually, it's, ju it's just being audio recorded as we speak. So in a few months, it will be available. Yeah. Now it's out on um, hard copy, but also yeah. in uh, ebook form. So get the hard copy and then you're going to be able to get the audible to be able to really get, because that's what I've started doing is I'm doing either reading it and then listening to audible or I'm audible and then I'm reading it. And man, the learning, it goes so much deeper. So you got to decide what works for you. I know people say, well, that takes a lot of time, but the thing is, you're listening to things when you're doing other things. You That's know, a great I'm cutting the grass. Yeah. I really, gotta... really stick, sticks with you if you can do two two different ways uh, and reinforce the the key points. Yeah, and we'll have his website in there. It's, it's exec group e x e x group dot com. All that information is going to be in show notes. So remember, just go to chargepodcast dot com. We're going to put all that in there. Now let's jump in. I've got two recharge round questions. I don't want to let you go yet, but the hmm. first one is the mantra. I only get to ask this a couple more times because we're going to change that question up as we change the name of the podcast. But charge is the name of the podcast. It's a mantra of mine. Create habits around real goals every day. What habit do you think's led to success in your life, Ian? Uh, actually, working out. Uh, I have, I'm kind of a you know nut when it comes to uh, exercise and uh, you know do something pretty much every day, and uh, it's helped me a lot not only with uh, you know physical uh, strength or di and discipline that comes from it, but also uh, keeps your the cobwebs out of your head. And I think I do a better job of thinking things through more clearly. Uh, after I've worked out and um, you know dealt with some of the, the stresses of daily life. Well, I'm so glad you said that and with us going in 2023, because we know we've got a listener here, probably more than one that says, I need to exercise more. And I challenge, I always tell people all the time is they think it's going to take more energy. It actually gives you energy. That's the thing you have to realize. And then the other thing you mentioned, and I believe in this too, because I'm the same way, it creates better creativity. So if you're one of these business owners and you're kind of can't find the solutions, start exercising. Guess what happens? I guarantee you, you'll start. I'm not saying you'll solve the solution right away, but over time, you'll be more creative. How can you handle that challenge? Yeah. And if I could just, you know, reinforce that for one second, sure. Gary, you know, I happen to be somebody who spends a lot of time working out and I'm very dedicated to it. But I also know plenty of people we get benefit out of just, you know, walking for 20 or 30 minutes. Right. So you might think to yourself, well, hey, I'm a busy entrepreneur. I don't have time to work out two hours a day. Uh, therefore, I do nothing. Uh, if you can actually just escape from where you're sitting or working and uh, go outside, perhaps, uh, and, you know, walk for 20 or 30 minutes, um, it, it, it kind of changes your whole outlook, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing it because with this going to New Year's, we need to start new habits, new disciplines that allows us to do it. The last question I have for you, we've all had failures and I always do this because I want uh, my guests to realize or my listeners to realize, guess what? We've not figured it all out either. We've made mistakes, but we've overcome those because we're willing to work towards it. What would you say is a failure or a mistake that you made that if you had a do-over, the old fairy came and gave you the pixie dust and said, I'll change this for you, even though we can't change the past. What would be the one thing you, you would say you would do over? Yeah, I went to work for a, a wrong, bad boss uh, mm. you know, a number of years ago who kind of reputationally I knew was an extraordinarily difficult person. Uh, but I, I was probably naive enough or perhaps even arrogant enough to believe that with my advice and counsel, you know, he could be that much better. Uh, <laughs> and and what I learned from the experience was you can't coach DNA. You know, there are certain things that are just fundamental to another human being, no matter how good your advice is or no matter how sincere you are in your effort to try to help somebody else. Uh, fundamentally, if they're a fundamentally flawed person, uh, you're not going to change them. And so uh, I think that, frankly, has helped me uh, in, in years since uh, make decisions about uh, who I work with, you know, whether they're a peer, whether they're a boss, whether they're somebody who, you know, works for me, um, making sure that you have good compatibility and you're well aligned in terms of values, because there are certain things you're just not going to change about somebody else. 
Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's a great advice and with working with people. Ian, share with them again to get the book. What's the website address? www.transformationalchangebook.com. Okay. And we're going to have that in show notes. So I know most of my people are not sitting there just ready to write it down. So it's in show notes, go to chargepodcast.com. All the information will be there and we'll have his website. We'll have his social media feed. So you can check out Ian, some great work that you're doing, Ian. And I just truly appreciate you being on the Charge Podcast today. Great to be with you, Gary. Thanks so much for having me. Now, Chargers, I always tell you, what's an action from the day? The action today is what do you need to change to become a transformational leader? Where are you stuck? Or maybe you're stuck in that I'm doing it this way. Think about that over these next couple of weeks before the new year starts and give yourself a roadmap. And then I truly would say pick up his book because it's going to give you some thought starters of what you can do in your business um, to be able to make that transformational change because business is changing. That means we as leaders have to change also. And I love the quote that Ian gave us was transform self before trying to change others transform self before trying to change others. And I think that's our message for us today. Now, remember, we're going to start January 1 with a new podcast name. You're not going to have to do anything if you've already subscribed. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the podcast, and then you're going to get that change. And you're going to see a new logo. You're going to see a new piece come up. But remember, that's the Charge Podcast. It's going to be called Small Business Answer Man Podcast. And I'm going to bring get great guests, just like Ian, to solve challenges that small business and entrepreneurs have. And the thing I love about Ian, he's done it in the larger companies, but he told us also in small businesses what those changes. And he's seen that himself in his line of work that he's done also. So as you move forward this year, I want you to enjoy the holiday season, but come back. We're going to have another episode next week. We're going to talk about some goal setting and we're going to end off this year with really giving some gratefulness to four years that I've been doing this podcast. And I appreciate every listener that's here. So go out today and make it a great day and then come back next week and I'll have another great guest. Make it a great day. Thanks for joining me. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.